day challenge is you guys can you are not seven day challenge, but the seven days prepare for a test. If you have eight days, if you have five days, just adjust this the way that you need. Okay. So I say it's seven days because one, it's a great title to be able to work with. Like, and know like, Hey, that's a week, right? I have a week before my exam. But what I want you to understand about that is like, don't just feel like you have to do like day one and like exactly that. Like you might have to maybe mix some of the days together. All right. Or if you have more time, maybe you have 10 days, maybe you have 14 days, then maybe elongate it. Right now, when I'm talking about seven days, what I am talking about for every single one of these sessions, looking for at least one to two hours. Right. And it might be adjust, but depending on your class and depending on you, you might even go up to like two and a half to three hours. Like, you know, I mean, I, I think at least going at least an hour is like the minimum that I would recommend for this kind of technique or this process that I'm going to take you through. But you know, yeah, you're Everything is going to be adjusted, right? So I just don't want you to take when I say like, all right, here's what you're going to do on day one. And here's what you could do, you know, in this day, like, I don't want you to feel constrained. Okay. I mean, this is about you and everybody, um, and everybody's class is all going to different. Okay. So please adjust this the way that you need. But I think the number one thing that, um, I think the number one thing that we need to understand, all right? So if we have seven days, it's our seven day ultimate stide, okay? And again, this is what I used to teach my students. This is something that I used to follow through with when I was a, when I was a student in college. This is what I followed. And this is, the, I think, something very, very beneficial for you. And again, adjust it as you need. But here's what I want you to focus on. Day number one, and this one is the hardest one because this is what I'm really bad at and what I do not like to do, but I think it's really, really important. So day number one is the plan and prepare. And what I mean by plan and prepare is you got to plan out your sessions, right? Because if you don't plan it out, more likely than not, you're not going to do it. You're not, you're, you're going to maybe say, oh, well, crap, I forgot. I, I forgot I had to study today. So therefore, uh, you know, this came up and like, I don't know, I'm going to want to go to this game or I want to do this and you're not going to fall through. So go to your calendar or whatever you use to schedule things and be like, all right, on this day, I am for these, you know, from this time to this time, that is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be studying for this class. Now, obviously we're focusing on the math class. Um, so I don't want you to be focusing on any other class. Like here is my studying for math from this time period to this time period. And again, minimum should be an hour, right? And I'm usually looking around one and a half to two hours if you only have seven days. But um, plan it out, right? And because every day is different. You're going to have obviously other courses, other exams. You're going to have other things that are coming up. But if you don't put it in, you don't write down that time period and that day, then guess what? Something's going to come up. Your friends are going to call you. There's going to be an event or something else that's going to, you're going to want to do, and you're going to push it to the end. And the last thing you want to do is say, oh yeah, crap, I forgot to go ahead and study. And then you're like at nine o'clock at night before you're supposed to go to bed, you know, or like 10 o'clock or 11 or whatever you go to bed. And you're like, oh crap, I got to go and do my study. And it's like, and then, then you don't put in the full time and the effort into your studying. Okay. So make sure you plan it out. The next thing is to prepare. Now, if you are not very organized or if you have not really properly studied for the rest of the year and you're starting to do this for an exam, then this could take some time, right? So sometimes my day one just might be like, oh, you might be spending a lot of time on preparing. But what I want you to do for preparing is I want you to get out all of your homework, all of your notes, all of your homework, all of your quizzes, all of your tests. Hopefully that is something your teacher has brought has given back to you, but organize them, like take them all out because we're going to be pulling this stuff out. We're going to be using them. And if you've created previous cheat sheets, then I want you to uh, obviously take those cheat sheets. Like if you take credit cheat sheets, then I mean, you're already like my student. You're like hundred percent prepared. I love you. Um, but a lot of times students, you know, will not create cheat sheets for certain tests or, you know, obviously for quizzes there's, I don't, you know, you should be, I think it's a great idea to treat, create cheat sheets throughout the year. Um, but you know, as you're going through every single day, but you know, in reality, I can understand it's, it's a good study tool. And sometimes people just like to use it during this time, like creating your cheat sheets. So at least one thing that, um, on this day one, because planning really shouldn't take too long, finding all of your notes and your homework and your testing quizzes shouldn't take too long. So what are you going to spend a lot of time doing? Well, I want you to go back through your notes, right? And here's kind of like the preparing for it. I want you to kind of take out the formulas, the definitions, all of those most important things, right? And depending on the time that you have and depending on how much time you have left, you can either start highlighting them, putting stars next to them, or if you do have more time to do is then start writing them down on a, like a test cheat sheet or your exam cheat sheet, like whatever you're studying for in this time that I want you to start rewriting some of those formulas, some of those definitions, um, the, uh, formulas, definitions, you know, theorems, whatever rules that you feel like are the most important that you want to make sure that you ingrain, right? Students always ask me, how do I memorize the blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? If you go back through and review it, if you go back through and write them down, not saying that's automatically going to have you memorized for the test, but it's much easier for you to recall that information 
the more and more times that you've reviewed it, the more and more times that you've written it down. So go ahead and rewrite them down on that cheat, cheat sheet, right? I preferably like to have everything down to like one single sheet of paper, but depending if you're doing this for a, an exam um, or for just a single test, you might need multiple sheets of paper, but start re rewriting some of those most important definitions and formulas. All right, now that is day one, the plan and prepare. Day number two is gonna be taking the test and the quizzes. So what I want you to do for day two on tests and quizzes is again, get all the tests, get all the quizzes. And again, what I want you to be able to do is find the problems that you feel are like the most important, right? Because again, you can't, your teacher can't put all the problems that you've ever done on a test and quiz all on all on a, on a test or an exam or on a test, right? Again, we're you're thinking about this as like a test, but like, you know, if you know if you're taking your quizzes, like they can't put all the questions on a quiz all on the test. So what you need to do is you just need to like identify what you feel is like the most important problems. Now, again, if it's like for an exam, you're taking those, you're taking, you're looking at the test and the quizzes. If it's just a test, you're looking at the quizzes. All right. And what I typically like for students to do is, is to typically kind of like identify the, um, identify problems that you got right. Right. But you feel like you're like, oh, that was a really hard, like that was a really important problem or like that came up and you know, in our notes and like teacher talked about that quite a bit, um, or probably definitely obviously problems that you got wrong. Okay. Um, now, depending on how much time you have, it's for like a test, you might just have, you know, or a quiz, like just look through all of that information and start either highlighting them, um, make sure that you have the answers. And if you like, if for whatever reason you don't have like the written out answer, then try to go back and like redo the problem because we want to make sure or, or pull up the answer on online, like whatever may be the case, like find, you got to make sure you have the answers for that because that's going to be something that is really important that we're going to get to. But you're basically just taking um, taking in all the test questions that you've had and you're just going to start highlighting them. You're just going to start, you know, highlighting or putting stars next to them because, and start reviewing them, start looking at the work that you did. Um, and trying to see if there's like maybe, maybe some patterns of your mistakes, or maybe there's some patterns within all of those problems, because what you want to do is you want to connect with your brain, the type of questioning that, uh, your, that your uh, teacher or professor has been provided on those assessments, because obviously guess what? Their, you know, test, their eventual, the test or quiz that you're studying for is going to be kind of like related to what you've already taken. The, then the next thing we're going to do is go back through your, um, now go through all of your homework assignments and, um, go through your homework assignments and your, um, what I have. Yeah. Go over your homework assignments as well as your notes that you have. So typically when your teacher like gives notes, they, a lot of times will go through examples, right? And obviously that's, that is great like feedback again to remember, like these are some problems that the teacher thought were so important for you to know that they showed you how to do them step by step, right? So go back and review them, put star or highlight them. If you're like, Hmm, I understand, you know, like I don't really kind of understand this fully anymore. Or this one's like, this is really, really important. I want to make sure that I remember how to do this problem because the teacher, you know, basically said like one thing I would kind of always do a lot of times would be like, Hey guys, this would be a great test question. Right. And it was like, I, it's a very, very important problem. And I just try to emphasize with kids. So maybe your teacher was doing something you know, similar to that. Like go back through, write down those questions. Now, the one thing I forgot to do, I, I apologize for this. Um, in going back to day two, <laughs> going back to the tests and quizzes, start writing down some of those problems that you had, um, that were the most important, like the ones that were like the really, really most important. I'm thinking like the top 10% write those down on the cheat sheet. Okay. So you got to go and do that for those test questions, write those down on that cheat sheet. Same thing for day three. Now, when you're going through your notes, when you're going through your homework, right? Identify like the top 10%. You're like, these are the most important. Either I know how to do them at the time, or I forgot how to do them. Rewrite them, the problem and all the work down on your test. Okay. So these are like the, the best of the best. Okay. Because again, you don't have, you don't have room to put all the problems that you've ever done on a cheat sheet, only the best, the top 10%, the top 10% that you got wrong or that you got right, but you want to make sure that you remember on this upcoming test or um, exam that you have coming up. So we've covered three days, right? And it's basically having been doing a lot of work on these three days. All of you simply have done is day one has been plan and prepare right? And prepares just collecting all of your notes and writing some of the important notes, definitions, and formulas on a cheat sheet. Day two has basically been going through all of your, um, all of your tests and your quizzes, identifying like the top problems that you either got right or you got wrong. And, or I'm sorry, identifying like the most important problems, but only taking the top 10% of those problems. I'd probably say like 
25% of your test questions and quiz and quiz questions, you should have highlighted or starred typically, right? That's going to adjust, you know, up or down. <clears throat> but from there, you only want to take the top 10% and put that on the cheat sheets. Then we're going to do the same thing for your homework. That's day three. Go through your, all of your homework, go through all of your notes, right? Around 25% of those questions, you should be putting a star or a highlighter because you're going to want to review them again. Okay. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing coming up. And then the top 10% of those problems, you're going to be rewriting them down on your cheat sheet. All right. Now <clears throat> that's just day three. We've just really haven't done a lot of work yet. So guess what day four is? You got to start doing stuff, right? I put in a note in my, I put a uh, poll in my, um, I put in a poll on my YouTube channel. I said, what do you guys do to study? And like, so far the most popular thing is like, just do practice problems, which is great. Right. But you got to make sure you are intentional with which problems you're doing. I just don't want you to do the review. The teacher said that's a lot of time is not going to be enough um, context or review for you to be prepared for an exam or a test. Okay. So just don't rely on just doing practice problems. Notice I spent three days of collecting and um, aggregating all the types of problems and reviewing what you needed before we actually start doing practice problems. Now I agree with you. You need to do practice problems, but it's not the only thing. And and also just doing problems, I want you to make sure that you are doing them intentionally. So on day four, um, on day four, what I want you to do is hopefully you have a study guide or a review, okay? And for day four, that is like the kind of day that I want you to really start working on that um, review. So going through all of the problems and hopefully you have the answers or at least you can check the answers, you know, online or something like that. Like day four, like try to spend as much time doing that review. Um, or if you don't have a review, trying to find like some additional problems you know, online or another teacher's review or something that can give you some practice problems that you've never seen before, right? Now, again, I wanna like be careful with something online. We wanna make sure it's in line with what you're learning and you're, you know, uh, in your class, but I want you to try to do some problems like that you've never seen before. And preferably like a great one to do is like, I used to give this to my students. I'd give them a review and I'd give them like a, um, a, mock, a mock exam or a mock test. This is a great time to be able to kind of do that. And again, you know, again, I'm saying like roughly between an hour and three hours you're spending. So, you know, this might be something that is creeping into a day before or a day after, but for day four, I really want you to plan on doing some problems that you've never seen before. All right. That is like a great day for that. Um, and hopefully you have the main important thing is that you can check your answers. So day five, what are we going to do on day five? Well, day five can creep in from day four, right? Because a lot of times those are going to be some problems that is going to take us a while. But for day five, what I want to do is go back to those tests and the quizzes. Right. Remember, we took the we took the 10 percent, the top 10 percent of all the problems on our tests and quizzes, and we put them down on our cheat sheet. Now, we just wrote them down, though. All the problems that we put a star next to we thought was important enough for us to review. How are we going to like we've already reviewed through our work and reviewed the answer. But what I want you to do is start going through and actually doing the problems. So if you have like your test, take a sheet of paper, hopefully like a thick sheet of paper and cover up the actual work that you did then try to actually redo that problem again. And I don't care if you got that problem right before, um, especially if you got the problem wrong, like try to go through it again. You've already looked at the answer. You already reviewed it before, right? If it's a top 10% problem, you've already reviewed it and rewritten it down. So those you probably don't need to do as much, but for the problem that you just like, just put a star or you just highlighted, try to do it again, right? So many times people were like, oh, I already know how to do that. So I'm not going to do that again. Well, guess what happens? Then the test or the exam shows up and they're like, oh crap, I forgot how to do it right? Treat your brain like a muscle, go back through the motions and redo those problems, cover up the answers and try to do them again. And the greatest thing about this, like on tests and quizzes is you already have the answers, remove your work from it and check what it is. If you got it wrong, which has happened, I did it before, then guess what? Throw away that sheet of paper, get another sheet of paper, cover up your work and do it again right? Math, learning math sometimes guys can be hard. So don't be afraid of sometimes like, and don't feel bad if sometimes you have to do a problem two or three times before you get it correct. Even if you got it right on a test previously or a quiz previously, it happens guys. Learning is a journey. It's not just like a switch that comes on and off and then you're like, okay, I'm done. You know, it's like, I, I did this problem right. So now I know how to do it, right? No, it, like you got to keep on going back. You got to keep on going into it. So um, do that for your testing quizzes. And then obviously if you have some more time, then go back to that review from day four, right? And go back and doing some of those new practice problems or just review the ones that you already did, right? And go back through from there. So now we're going into day six. 
on day six, we're going to do the exact same thing as day five, but rather than focusing on the test and the quiz questions, what I want you to do is to focus on those homework questions as well as the review questions, right? We already took the top 10% and we put those on our cheat sheets. So the rather like 15% from that, you know, remember I said like you should aim for like 25% of the questions. So for the other 15%, like again, do the same thing, cover up the answer and practice them and go through them. Like you should start recognizing that you're doing a lot of the same motions over and over again. But again, guys, that is how you're going to build in that, um, that muscle memory and that confidence going into the exam. Um, so work through, work through all of those problems, again, covering up the answers, like, and if, again, if you get it wrong, then go ahead and get a new shape paper, cover it back, cover it back up and do it right again above your homework, um, homework problem or from the problem that maybe your teacher did. Right. I used to, um, I remember we didn't give our, we didn't get a lot of answers. So sometimes I even did them from problems in the book. Um, so I would go through, you know how like a math book will have like test, you know, questions and I'll show like the example. I used to get a sheet of paper and just cover up those example problems. And actually I tried doing them there because I didn't have a lot of resources. Uh, I remember sometimes and for some classes. So I even did that. And you can do that too, like with online classes uh, or with online material, just make sure that it's in line with what you are learning or what your tester um, exam is going to be on. Then again, if you have some more extra time, don't be like, all right, cool. I just did all those. It took me like 10, 15 minutes. No guys. Focus on at least an hour. If you only have seven days, put in at least an hour for each and every one of those seven days. All right. And so then go back through those extra problems that you did, like that from that study guide or from that mock test or mock exam. Review the problems. And if you're already done with them, I mean, or if you're not done with them, then start completing them, doing more of them. Like the more practice problems that you can do, the better you are going to be prepared. Now, day seven is very, very important because day seven, I really don't want you lifting up a, a pencil and trying to do more math problems. If you did this correctly, day two, three, four, five, and six should cover plenty enough math problems. And if not, then you didn't spend enough time on day two through six, right? Again, an hour should be minimum and you should be looking between the hour and three hours. I like to set between the hour and a half. So make sure you're doing those practice problems because on that last day seven, all I want you to do is just review. Just I want you to relax. I don't want you to drink caffeine. I don't want you to drink food that is bad for you, that is, uh, that is not healthy. I want you to try to eat as healthy as food as possible. I want you to be calm because guess what? The night before a test, what happens? You have the stress, you have the anxiety, right? But if you have followed this step-by-step -step guide, you're also gonna have some confidence because you're gonna realize that you have done each and everything possible that you are capable of to be prepared for that test or that exam. And guess what? That is the absolute, that is the absolute best feeling that you can have walk. That is the absolute best feeling that you can have walking in to taking your test being like, you know, just looking around, looking at you. I'm like, yep, I'm ready and prepared. And you might not be fully prepared, but you're as ready and prepared as you possibly can be. It's a great feeling. And that's what I want you to strive from. But I don't want you to be like, oh crap, I drank so much caffeine or so much coffee. I can't fall back asleep. I have been there before, right? I, a lot of times I used to study at the coffee shop. I love my coffee shops but that was sometimes not a great place um, because I would just drink caffeine and then I couldn't fall asleep and then I was sleep deprived and then I was taking the test and I was not in the ideal um, situation, right? So if that happens, you know, to you, try to avoid caffeine, try to avoid, you know, the processed food and anything else that can kind of not that, um, anything else that you can, you know, kind of get you off your game, right? Try to avoid sugar or anything like that. Just, you know, relax. I want you to breathe, do some meditations, calm yourself down as much as possible. Take out the review sheet, take out all the work that you've done and just review it. Just review it. Just look back through it and review it. You shouldn't need to have to do any more practice problems, right? You should have a ton of work to just go ahead and review, relax, um, and, and, and start feeling prepared and confident and, and getting those thoughts in your head that you are going to do great on your test exam. Because guess what? You need to have some confidence. You need to have that, uh, that kind of step as you step into the classroom, because I want you to absolutely destroy your test and exam. And I know you're going to do that. So if you haven't, 